Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Now I started this YouTube channel um, last year sometime I think it was and it was like all gaming content. Um, I'm kind of like more true, I'm kind of more true to myself now and I want to share more about me, um, more about all the hobbies that I do um, and one of my main hobbies is reading. Um, I've you know read my entire life I think like most people I kind of went through a phase for a few years after I left school where I kind of left reading, um, I kind of like got out of it but um, at the start of this year I definitely I definitely got into it again. Um, I read some books last year um, which I really enjoyed and maybe I can talk about them in another video but today I wanted to go through the books that I've read so far this year. They're kind of in, in order of how I've read them but they're also not because I've, I've try to group together like series that I've read but I might have had some time in between them um so it's kind of how how I read them but kind of not if that makes sense so I hope you enjoyed this video um as I said there's going to be more book content there's going to be more um kind of cozy vlogs it's going to be a bit of everything a bit of you know all what I like to do um you know there's still going to be some gaming um I'll do writing like there's going to be a lot so just bear with me kind of as I get comfortable speaking in front of a camera long form like this I've only just gotten really kind of used to doing it on TikTok and Instagram um which I'll link down below I think I already have them linked um in my bio anyway um but yeah I shall get on with the list of the books I have read So, the first book that I read at the start of this year was Legends and Lattes. Now, this is like my first book kind of into cozy fantasy. I did read Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies last year, um, and I absolutely loved that. Um, but at the time, I didn't know that's what was classed as cozy fantasy. I kind of just went into it because I love fairies, and that's just kind of like how it went. So, this is like my first book where I was like, oh, this is a genre like cozy fantasy and what really like drew me to it was high fantasy low stakes good company i love high fantasy books but sometimes like i'm an anxious girly i need to just relax in my escapism sometimes so it was nice that this is like low stakes now i know cozy fantasy is not for everybody because it's not like high action packed like not a lot happens but it was pr like this this kind of genre is like perfect for me. Some like, as you'll see, like going through, like I've dotted cozy fantasy all throughout this year and it's really just kept me in reading. So Legends and Lattes, I absolutely loved and I rated it five stars. Um, and I also read the prequel, Bookshops and Bone Dust. Now I also rated this five stars, um, but I don't know, I thought this one I would love more, even though I rate Legend of Lattes five stars, so you can't really rate more unless you're going for six stars. But it took me a little bit longer to get into this, and I think it's because I was so used to the character already having, like, given up fighting and, like, running, you know, the coffee shop and stuff, hence why it's called Legends of Lattes. Um... But yeah, so Viv, the main character, this is like a prequel series, so she's still technically um, a mercenary. Um, so yeah, it was a little bit weird for me to get into. I feel like if I had read this first and then read Legends and Lattes, maybe that would have like lined up on my mind a little bit more. But this is still a five stars for me. I absolutely loved it. Um, I think I just, in my head, I had already got an image of who Viv was and this almost felt like a step back, um, but it makes sense, you know, it's a prequel and I'm kind of all about, I love reading a prequel before the main series, but Legends and Lattes is what I like saw first and heard about first, so this came um, second. So yeah, this was um, the kind of duology, but I suppose not really, like, you can read one and you can read the other, but you don't have to read both of them to know like what's going on. And um, there's enough background in each book to like tell you about them. So if you only wanted to read one and not the other, you can do that as well. But I absolutely loved them and they were definitely both five stars for me. And then I read God Killer. Now this first drew my attention in Waterstones when it was, I think it was like Fantasy Book of the Month, which was like a new thing that they had brought in. And I saw this and I was like, this looks gorgeous. And also, um, so basically I actually should preface this by saying I started reading Legends of Lattes and God Killer on my Kindle and I love them so much. I had to get the physical copies. Um, but I actually got a special edition of God Killer only because that was the only one I could find on Vinted. But I'm not really, you know, 
too mad about it considering the map in it is actually in color and as everybody knows when you're a fancy girly you'll love color and also look at that it's gorgeous but anyway um maybe i can do another video of like my special edition so we'll not rattle on too much but yes i read um god killer um and as i said this drew my attention in waterstones when it was book of the fantasy book of the month so so good um so i'll read the back of it because i think like it's definitely very interesting so and I have no idea how I pronounce names, so if I'm pronouncing them wrong, I am so sorry. This is just how I pronounce them. Um, Kissin ripped her sword out through the god's side in a stink of blood and dank water, and the shrine behind the waterfall shattered. The god made no sound as her flesh turned back into the current and sank into the river, releasing it for the town and villages it fed. To thrive or fail, but she managed a last barb to Kissin's mind. When Midrin falls to the god, your kind will be the first to die. So basically, Kissin um her family was killed by people who worship um a fire god i believe i think um i'll read like the little blurb about it but from like my memory basically they're burned um but she managed to to escape and kind of hates gods and so when she grows up she ends up becoming a god killer so gods aren't looked nicely upon now um in kind of this present world so this is what it says it's about you're not welcome here god killer is like the little tagline and then kissin's family were killed by zealots of a fire god now she makes a living killing go killing gods and enjoys it that is until she finds a god she cannot kill skeddy a god of pure white lies has somehow bound himself to a young noble and they are both on the run from unknown assassins joined by a disillusioned knight on a secret quest they must travel to the ruined city of blen radden where the last of the wild gods reside to each beg a favor pursued by demons and in the midst of a burgeoning burgeoning no idea civil war they will all face a reckoning something is rotten at the heart of the kingdom and only they can be the ones to stop it so basically each character that you're introduced to has their own kind of background their own kind of problems and they all want to go to glen radden to ask a god a favor different gods because different things there's literally like a god for everything like as it said like skeddy the little um god that about is a god of white lies um but there's like literally a god for everything there's like minor gods that are like god of a specific river or there's like major gods who are like god of fire um so it's really interesting i loved it i haven't actually read sunbringer yet which i'm really annoyed at myself about because i enjoy this so much and like couldn't wait for sunbringer to come like to come out i even bought it on like hardback hence why i wanted god killer so they could match and then i haven't even read it yet so and then i read divine rivals um now this is obviously a book that a lot of people know now a lot of people don't like this cover because they don't like people on the cover and i'm normally the same but i prefer this cover to the us version i believe which is like flowers or like a feather or something on it like i can never tell what it is but i just think this is so sweet um and if you don't know what this is about i'll read like the back of it two rivals two stories two hearts one fate so this is definitely what i would say is light on the fantasy and kind of more focus on like the rivals to lovers storyline like the romance storyline the main thing i loved about this was how beautifully it was written like it was so lyrical like i absolutely loved it like it was just it was so good like i absolutely loved it i haven't read ruthless files yet um because of how this ended i was a little bit without giving away too much a little bit heartbroken um so i've put off reading ruthless files but i will read it um but yeah this is Divine Rivals and I absolutely love it. So I also read Kindle books, um, as I said, and ones that I haven't got the physical versions of. So I'll just quickly read out a few of them because they came before Divine Rivals because I was kind of reading Kindle books. Because as I said, Legends of Lattes and God Killer, I read as Kindle books. Um, so I also started a series called the Weary Dragon Inn series and I read one, two, three books um, early this year of them which are called Drinks and Sinkholes, Fiends and Festivals and Secrets and Snowflakes. Now I read these after I read Legends of Lattes because I wanted more cozy fantasy. That is a five star series for me. I've read more so like I've read almost up to like where i'm up to date um i'll have to figure out where i am on those but five star series absolutely love it i feel like this is like about all of the places video because i'm looking at my goodreads on the pc but i feel like it looks slightly different and it's not the right order for when i read things so 
if things are a bit all over the place I do apologize I will figure out a better way to categorize what I've read um and because I'm going through like 10 months of the year um there's gonna be a lot so we're gonna fire through some of these um so they were a five star for me just nice cozy fantasies it's like this little like cozy village there's lots of like magical creatures um but in the world magic is outlawed um but obviously there's like underground magic there's like things that go on um kind of natural disasters and then our main character has like a hidden past that she can't remember because she's got amnesia so you're slowly like learning her story as well throughout the books so they were really really good and then I was part of a book club and I read that time I got drunk and saved a demon not for me um absolutely nothing to do with the book or the author or anything like that I just don't think I like spicy books with minimal plot I and it was also very short and I didn't really feel connected to the characters so that wasn't for me at all um and then I read a indie book um Oracle of the Sun by L.A. Robinson um she's a very good friend of mine um that was five stars if you love Egyptian mythology mixed with fantasy lots of adventure like on an epic scale like plot twist galore you need to read Oracle of the Sun. And then next I read a book that I think everybody knows, which is Assistant to the Villain. Again, she's like huge on TikTok. This is like talked about by everybody and for good reason. This was a five stars. I was pleasantly surprised by this. Um, I knew I was going to love it anyway, but because I followed her series on um, TikTok where she does like, um, you know, this is what I think the Assistant to the Villain would do in this situation or whatever. Um, but like she's really fleshed out the world in the book. Now obviously I knew that was going to happen anyway but I was just very pleasantly surprised by this and this was a five star for me and I absolutely loved it. Um, so if you haven't read it and you just like you want a good time on a book with fantasy, with um, romance, everything like that, read this. It's, it's so good. Like highly, highly recommend. And then I read some more um, Kindle Reads. So I read The Good and the Green um, by Amy York. I read that four stars, really loved it. It's the first in the Wilder Rise Tales. Um, I've read her most recent one in it, which is um, The Bright and the Blue. That was five stars for me. I, I love the second one. I love the introduction to um, the new characters and figuring, you know, learning more about them. Kind of dual POV, two kind of stories gone on at once highly recommend like that series is so good again cozy fantasy so as you would say high fantasy low stakes so so good absolutely loved it and then i read another indie book um called heirs of the cursed um and it's by two authors actually um i think this is the first book i've read um that's by two authors um and this is by dana and elsie emerson um this book was phenomenal I got to be a beta reader for it, um, which I was very, very like blessed, very grateful. Um, this is kind of like the first dipping my toe into being a beta reader. Um, and then I have no words for it. It was a five star. Um, a Curse for Two Souls is what their series is called. Um, it was just, it was amazing. I absolutely loved it. Like that was a very high fantasy, very big world building um so that was like a lot of action adventure um enemies to lovers like just all of it was amazing like so so good and then i read the fourth book in the weary dragon Inn series which is beasts and baking um so again continuation on cozy fantasy very good time five star again and then um i actually dipped my toe into net galley um and i got an arc which is one like, there's like the ones that you can request and then there's the ones that people put up there to be an art for free that you just download. So this was called The Cerise um, by Bailey Black and it was the first book in the Kingdom of Lies um, series. It was amazing, I loved it. It was very fast paced, very, very fast paced. So if you like that, I think you'll like this. Again, high fantasy, high action, as I said, very fast paced um you don't know like who you like of the characters like it kind of unravels a lot of things so definitely go into it with like not knowing that much about it because that's what i did and i really enjoyed it and i rated that four stars 
and then I read Emily Wilde's Map of the Other Lands. This series is just everything. I love, love, love the Emily Wilde series. Cannot wait for the third one to come out. Um, as I said, I, I um, read Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fries last year, and I've read Map of the Other Lands this year, and this was everything. Five star. It is cozy fantasy, but I would say like it has a little bit more action than other cozy fantasies, if that makes sense. It was just really good. I loved it. It was a you know an amazing time. So highly recommend. Okay, what did I read next? Oh, I read the fifth book in the Weird Dragon Inn series, Magic and Mole Men. So good. Absolutely loved it. Amazing. And then I read something a little bit different. Um, this is what I would call like a guilty pleasure book series because it's not my usual thing, but I did really enjoy it and it was a good time. So there's a series on Kindle Unlimited, I believe, um, called Nevermore Bookshop Mysteries. Um, and basically, um, characters from books have come to life and are running this bookshop. And this girl is actually going blind. Um, and it's written by an author. Um, the author um, wrote a character very similar to um, herself. Um, the author was called Stephanie Holmes. Um, and it's, it is a spicy series. Um, and it's also... I think it's called a reverse harem where it's like a girl and multiple boyfriends again this is normally not my thing but it was really fun like it was a really good time i rated the first one three stars because you were kind of more just getting into introduced to the characters and you didn't really know them um but the rest of them were four stars i finished that series um so there was let me see nine books in that series and there was also a christmas novella which was technically 3.5 but I didn't read it after the third one I didn't actually know about it I read it in the order that came on Kindle Limited and it placed it just before the last one for some reason um they're just a good time again it's reverse harem it's but don't get me wrong it's a murder mystery as well so like there's a murder or there's like a kidnapping or there's like different things that happen in each book and they're basically like consulting detectives um and it's just a really good time like if you want to know more about any of the books that i've read like let me know and i can do a bit more of an in-depth but i don't really want to do an in-depth into each book in each series that i've read this year because this that this video is already getting on um so yeah i don't want to be here any longer than necessary because i don't want to bore people but um, the next book that I read, kind of in between the Nevermore Bookshop one, is a book called A Fragile Enchantment. And I read this with a book club as well. And this is by Alison Saft. Going into this, I uh, didn't know it was going to have Irish kind of connections. Um, there's Irish names. It's kind of based off like what has happened between like Ireland and England and that sort of thing. Um, at least from reading it, it's very, it sounds very clear like that's what it's going for. I don't know if that's what was intended. And I rated that a four star. I really enjoyed it. It was very um, whimsical. It was very fantastical. There was romance. There was tension. Like, it was just very good. Um, I also have no idea if I've been, like, definitively giving, like, stars, like, telling you what I... Uh, rated these books so again I apologize if this is all over the place this is like my first time doing like one of these types of uh videos so I'm quite nervous so if it's a bit all over the place I really do apologize um and then I read The Serpent and the Wings of Night um and I read The Ashes and the Star of Cursed King I read those on Kindle um both a five star although I did prefer The Serpent and the Wings of Night I love The Trials um this is like enemies to lovers to enemies to lovers to enemies to lovers it feels like it's it's such a good time carissa broadbrent's writing is like amazing it was addictive like i read these like so quickly and like they're big books like i couldn't tell when i was reading on the kindle that they were big books but they are big books like they're very very big um but they were amazing very good time absolutely loved them um, so they're a duology, but there is like more books coming out, but it's going to focus on different characters. Um, and there is a novella as well, which I have read, Six Scorch Roses. That was a five star. I love that novella. I want more of that. Like, that was like so amazing. It was like 
such a soft romance and like such a beautiful story like that novella was probably one of my favorite novellas i've ever read it was like amazing and then i read um when the moon hatched i rated it a two star um on paper it's everything i should love and more but there was just there was so much world building but then the plot was lost like halfway through it like i don't know i just didn't enjoy it i know some people absolutely love it and rated it like four or five stars maybe it was my brain i'm not sure but it was just it was too complicated for me to like keep up with there was just a lot going on um but also not a lot going on um so yeah i don't like speaking too negatively about about books so yeah that was that one um and then i was an arc reader for a book called dreamwalker um which is the first in the realm of dreams um by Brittany gawson it was a four star for me i absolutely loved that it felt so unique um it felt like very fast paced very high action loved it it was so good like if you haven't read dreamwalker yet you need to it's it, it, it's amazing like it was definitely a very unique storyline and i really loved it like that was like well appreciated and then i read kind of around the same time i read the tattooist of auschwitz um i wanted to read kind of out of my genre and so to speak because i'm mainly fantasy as you can probably be able to tell um and me and some friends read this and it was like i found it very interesting i rated it four stars it feels weird to rate a book that's based on a true story about like how much i enjoyed it or whatever because like that was like such a dark time but it was very interesting to read about what it was like um in the camps um and what it was like to survive for that long um and see like others around you obviously not survive and like the conditions and what people had to do it was just it was and then it had a bit at the end that like told like where the actual um people um were and you know what they did after the war and stuff so that was that was very good it was by heather morris um she does have other books um that i may eventually read um but yeah the the story was very beautiful um and then i read the sixth book in the weary dragon inn series called veils and villains that was again five star cozy fantasy amazing i started my adventure into throwing a glass so unlike some people i started with the assassin's blade i am a chronological girly i as i said if there's a prequel if there's something that comes before it i like to read it and contrary to other people's opinions i actually really really enjoy the assassin's Bl i really really enjoyed the assassin's blade i rated it five stars i think i've rated all of them five stars um but for different reasons so hear me out because i know obviously they're all very different um and you know maybe someone could be like more like a 4.5 star or something but this is a five star ripped my heart out and um tore it to pieces that's that's all i can say ripped my heart out and tore it to pieces at the end um but it's it's so good it's so so good so the assassin's blade is five novellas and i will never ever ever get over what happened in this book that's all i'm gonna say and then um i read of course throwing a glass um selena she is a badass assassin um she's just left Indovier, which was a or Indovier, i don't know how to pronounce it which is a salt mine for slaves basically it's like imprisonment and she gets made a deal with the prince um king king and prince i suppose um, both of them to become the king's assassin but she has to go through trials and different things and it's just amazing also i have like these like white editions of them i got them in like a pack series together um i don't see a lot of a lot of the copies and then the back of them are actually like the colors um which is cool um crown of midnight was probably my least favorite so far um i still rate it at five stars because i still really enjoyed like what was happening in it and like you know kind of the storyline opened up a lot more um this probably would be like maybe if i think back on a 4.5 star but i'm not one to like change ratings really and so it's a five star 
my favorite so far has been air of fire oh my god i read this let me see uh, i read this in two days um i also work full time and they were work days where i read this and i read it in two days it is a chunky book um i'm a fast reader but this was fast even for me um let's see 562 pages and i read it in two days on work days um I've like previously kind of like seen like how much I could read in an hour and it was around like 90 pages. Um, but yeah, this like really surprised me. It was so good. It was just air fire with everything. I can't wait to continue the series. Um, I'm waiting on people to catch up because I was buddy reading. Um, but yeah, just it was everything and more that I needed really. Um, so yeah, it's so good. I get what people mean about throwing a glass being like their Roman Empire because it, it's amazing. Um, so then I read Of Ashes and Wildflowers, um, which is the first book in the Me in the Medicine Princess series, um, by Erin Fay. I'm on TikTok. Um, she's a friend of mine. And I read this on Kindle as well. It was amazing. I loved it. Read it read it at four stars. Again, this was another like unique series, and this is also um What's it called? It's also indie published. Um, so if you haven't read this, you need to go and read it because it's it's a, it was amazing. Like I truly, truly, truly loved it. It was perfect. It was everything. Chef's kiss. Um, and then okay, this one it gets a little bit weird with where everything is up to. I read I reread the Cool Prince series. I'll not bring them up because they're not a new read to me, but I reread the Cool Prince series and How the King of Elfheim Learned to Hate Stories. Mm, five star series for me. I absolutely love it. I reread it at least once a year. Like it's just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And then I read Impossible Creatures, which has this like really cute sprayed edge. Um so this one, Waterstones Book of the Year, it's really, really good. It's definitely aimed at children. Um, it's definitely like a very easy read, very easy like language. But again, it's literally like a Bloomsbury children's book. So it's for children and I'm very clearly not a child, but it was such a magical world. Um, I rated this three stars only because like, again, it's not comparable to like, young adult or adult fantasy so it's probably like on a rating scale of its own but this is really good um i did really enjoy it i love like magical creatures it did break my heart at the ending um the ending was like not what i thought would happen in a children's book um and then i read on the kindle um pippi's in for wandering spirits by erin rich this is also um an indie book if you haven't read this you need to read it. I'm going to read you my review on Goodreads just because there's nothing else that I can say about this. This book was so magical, bittersweet and heartfelt. A story and the message messages inside I believe we all need to hear at some point in our lives. I highly recommend this book. It was amazing. You need to just go into this book like blind because that's basically what I did. Um, just five stars. 10 out of 10. Amazing. Absolutely loved it. Fell in love brilliant and then um for a book club i'm in i read gothicana this was kind of like my first gothic fantasy i suppose you could say um dip my toes in it was a four star loved it really good fun story i took this on holiday with me and the sun was so warm it melted the glue and the pages fell out so that was fun. <laughs> so hence why I don't have the book. Um, it's somewhere, but it's not able to be held up because it will fall apart. But again, it was really good. I would recommend that. And then, as I said, I read Six Scorched Roses, which was the novella in the Crowns on the Axia series. Um, it was about side characters that are introduced in book two. So they say to read it in between book one and book two, but I actually read it third because I just wanted to read what happened in The Ashes and the Star Cursed King. So that was that. And then a series that I thought was complete because I wanted to read it all was... Um, Trials of the Sun Queen and then I read book two and book three Rule the Aurora King and Fate of the Sun King five star series um my 
review for it lol was I've binge read the series and the ending of this book broke me. How did I not know the fourth book isn't out yet? <laughs> like that was my word. So I am very excited for the fourth book. Can't wait to finish that series. Um, just, it was amazing. Five star series for me, fantastic. And then, I and then a book I read in a day was Only a Monster. And then I think it's Only a Monster Can Kill a Hero um, by Vanessa Lynn. And my review for this, cause I love, I love reading my reviews and my thoughts. I read this in 12 hours. Obviously I didn't sit there reading for 12 hours, but from when I started the book to when I ended it, 12 hours had elapsed of the day. It was so fast paced, action packed, and I couldn't put it down. I loved this so much. Go into it blind. I basically went into it blind. Um, the blurb was interesting, but go into it blind. You'll have a fantastic time. It's amazing. And then I read The Crimson Moth. Um, I rated this four stars. Although I thought it was going to be a five star book for me, I thought I would love it more than I did, um, but it was still amazing. Um, my review for this was, I really enjoyed reading this book. The storyline and the world building were really interesting and the foreshadowing was done really well. Love getting to know the characters and learning their backstories and their motives. So it definitely sets up well for the second book. I'm really excited to read that. I think it's called The Rebel Witch, although I don't know if it's having a different um, title because in the US, The Crimson Moth is called The Heartless Hunter. Um, so... I don't know why the title changed. I don't know if The Rebel Witch is going to be called something different in either place, but I'm really excited for the second one. A book which gave me so much atmospheric love. It was so good, called Where the Dark Stands Still. This is a four star read for me. And my review says, I love the world, the fan family, and the love I felt while reading this book. Also, the Polish culture was such a breath of fresh air to read about. Highly recommend this book. Um, this is why AB neck really sorry if that's pronounced or if I've butchered that completely I do apologize but this was really good I absolutely loved it um again I would probably categorize this kind of somewhere in the middle between a cozy fantasy and normal fantasy book all of the feels while reading this was I was obsessed it was so so good like highly recommend it was amazing and then I read Lore of the Wilds um, by Anna Lee Sprana or Sabrana. Again, I'm so sorry that I don't know how to pronounce any of these. Um, this is a five star read for me. This was so good. Um, and also not what I expected. Again, kind of went in blind and the story changed in the best possible way. Um, so my review was, this was wow, so unique, magical and everything I look for in a book. The world building characters and story were fantastic. I can't wait for the second book, which is very true. And um, the way that that one ended, I need a second book like yesterday. Um, and then I read The Hobbit and the first book in Lord of the Rings. Um, I just realized I haven't been holding any of these up. I'm so sorry. Um, this was Only a Monster um, Can Kill a Hero. And it's that big and I read it in a day. Um, I don't know. It was just, <laughs> it was amazing like genuinely and how many pages was it let me see around like 350 something um so this was like quite a surprise for me to read it so quickly and then this was the crimson moth i love this cover it's so pretty absolutely beautiful um very very good and then this is where the dark stands still and i got the waterstone sprayed edge version because it just goes so well but i love the colors of this like the mint the gold and then like the purple writing absolutely gorgeous um lore of the wilds again just look at that book gorgeous such a good story like honestly all these books i pretty much recommend so yeah as i said then i read the hobbit and the first book the fellowship of the rings i'm doing my reread and i've been posting my thoughts over on threads i am going to continue with the um reread as well i've just been taking it slowly because i really want to enjoy the world and enjoy the story and everything so that was that so then i read as i said the bright and the blue um it was it was a second book in the world of rice tales i've actually said in my uh in my review, I said I would round this up to 4.5 stars. I love this one even more than the first book. It felt like it captured the magical 
whimsical feeling with the addition of new characters and deepening plot to save Herod's Hollow. I also love the dual POVs as every chapter ended on a mini cliffhanger that kept me reading. That was so true. Every chapter seemed to end on a cliffhanger and I needed to read on, but I would need to read two chapters to figure out what was happening because it would switch back to the other character. Very clever writing, I must say. And then I read The Honey Witch and this is the perfect autumnal read cozy fantasy but a lot happens at the end like the pace really picks up the action really picks up but if you haven't read this again go in blind just read it like the vibes the aesthetic like just look at the front cover you need to read it and then lastly, I am in the middle of reading the Caraval series. So um, I've read the first one, um, Caraval. This was, I believe I read this four stars, I think. Um, again, it's for some reason not coming up in my Goodreads. I don't know why. Um, and I'm currently reading Legendary. I'm like about halfway through or maybe just a little bit over halfway through. Um, but yeah, those I think, again, my Goodreads on my PC is a little bit messed up. So it's not showing me every book. So I've had to like remember what I've read or looked at my phone. Um, but yeah, that was every book I've read so far this year, um, which adds up to, I think, 57 books um, I've read this year. Yes, 57 books of the year. So my Goodreads goal was actually 24 books because I thought I'm, this, I'm just getting into reading. I want to ease myself into it. I don't want to do something that's like unattainable. So I'll do like if I, as if I read two books every month, um, which would be 24. And I read 57. So I have apparently completed my goal on that goal and the percentage is 238%. So I don't think I'll get to 100 books before the end of the year because again we're in October already but maybe I'll get to 70. I feel like you know 13 more books I feel like that's like definitely definitely attainable. Um, so yeah those were the books I read so far. Let me know if you've read any of these books um, and how you know you can say in the comments below um what your goodreads goal um is or just your personal goal if you don't use goodreads like what was your personal goal and what you wanted to hit um book wise um book reading wise and then um you know we can we can see from there um i don't know how to end these types of videos again this is my first time doing like a long form video posting it on youtube so um let me know what you want to see um i'm already planning on doing um my favorite reads of this year um video and um a tbr video like a tbr jar video and i did an instagram story um to see if anyone had any tbr prompts so keep an eye out for that as well but yeah thank you so much for watching if you watch this um far it's probably gonna be a really long video so i really do apologize um but yeah let me know what you want to see next and i'll see you in the next video